Hi, everyone. It's noon here on the East Coast, so it's time for our webinar. We are so glad that you've joined us here. Just a few little housekeeping things. Um, we have live captions available. So if you um, are interested in closed captioning, we've got that going. And then I just want to say welcome to everybody. I'm Sarah Hanawald. I'm the assistant head of school for One Schoolhouse. And today with me, I have Peter Gao, who is often my uh, colleague and co-conspirator in our webinars. And we have another guest today, Beta Eaton, and we'll talk more about her later. We're going to talk today about how strong student-teacher relationships support teachers every bit as much as they support students. And we're going to dive into that. Just as a reminder to everybody, I want to say on our blog, we have written today by our own One Schoolhouse's Carrie Smith, content versus contentedness. And I think you'll find that a very interesting read. And then next week's webinar, we're going to be talking about advanced independent curriculum and what that means for schools. So without further ado, I want to say thank you, Peter, for coming back today again and joining me. And then Beta, really, really delighted to have you here with us. Peter, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role and then Beta will bring you on. Oh, Peter, you're muted. <laughs> it's good to be back. I'm the Independent Curriculum Resource Director at One Schoolhouse, and that means I get to do a lot of work with my colleagues here, and especially in the area of professional development. So I'm excited to be here, and thank you, Sarah. Now, Beta, you have a really interesting role here at One Schoolhouse, and um, you have been with One Schoolhouse in different capacities for a long time. Your role this year is new to you. So can you tell everyone just a little bit about you, your background, and um, how you came to One Schoolhouse? Sure. Thank you, Sarah, for having me. Um, hello, everyone. It's really nice to be with you this afternoon. And um, as Sarah said, I am a veteran One Schoolhouse teacher. I've actually been teaching with One Schoolhouse since 2013 um, when it was online school for girls. And I started my own career in education at an all girls boarding school in Maryland. And I've taught the forensics class here for, I believe seven, seven years now. And this director of student support role is brand new to me since October. And it has uh, become a role that has just um, been near and dear to my heart and in, um, in so important in what we do here at One Schoolhouse. Before I came here, I was the Dean of Students and an Assistant Principal at Washington International School in Washington, DC. And from that experience um, in an administrative role, I was able to transition both my knowledge from teaching at one schoolhouse as a teacher and learning how the model of student support works from the teacher side of things and to be able to impart my administrative experience into the director of student support role here. And ultimately the title really truly encompasses the vast majority of what I do, which is helping our students be as successful as possible. And one of the things that I know that we're going to discuss here today is not only helping students be successful, but if there is um, an opportunity to um, help that student success transition into helping support our teachers as well, because they are truly the foundation of our schools and the student experience. Great, thank you so much. Um, as we get going in the conversation, I'll just remind everybody, we're gonna use the Q&A for questions that you may have for Beta around teacher and student support, and then we'll use the chat for sharing resources and connecting with one another. And speaking of resources, I'm gonna share a recent report issued by Challenge Success with NBC on how students and teachers are doing. And it's an in-depth report and well worth a look, but I will say, you know, without giving away too much of the research, the answer is, you know, everybody's not doing great. You can't look at Twitter right now without seeing tweets about teacher exhaustion and needs and the impact. 
And when we think about support, it's not about Starbucks gift cards for everybody. Not that we're knocking those. I mean, absolutely keep them coming. But systems that allow schools and academic leaders to focus on the right things. So Peter, you have some thoughts on that. Do you want to share, share some of that? Not muted. There we Sorry. Go. Teachers have too much on their plates. We know that. But the thing that matters most this year, perhaps, is that teachers have too much on their plates. They have been served a giant meal uh, without being able to go through the buffet line and picking and choosing quite so much. And then they are taking their plates off in the corner to deal with by themselves way too often. And so what teachers have on their plates, the question is, does it all need to be there? And are there ways to share some of this stuff? It's important that the academic leaders in school know what's on teachers' plates. Do they understand what teachers are dealing with, both personally in the sense that they know them? You know, the relationships between teachers and students that we talk about are about building not just trust, but also a sense of mutually being taken seriously. They're about building confidence and curiosity in, on both sides of the relationship. And so academic leaders and teachers' relationships need to sort of have those same things. Leaders need to really see their teachers, understand the time they're putting in, but also to understand that there might be areas in which we could build systems, we could build structures in our schools that would, if not take things off the plates, at least make some of these things that seem like heavy burdens become shared burdens. And that will make a big difference in teachers' lives. It's not going to change the pandemic. It's not going to change the whole thing. But it will make teachers more confident, feel taken more seriously, and feel as though they're being seen. So that's, and that only pays off in really good things for students as well. beta has got some thoughts on this, I bet. I do. Thanks, Peter. I think one of the um, things that, that really uh, ties into what you're saying is getting to know our teachers because they spend so much time getting to know our students. And one of the things that teachers have been dependent on for so long, and I think that we all are if we work in schools, is that we have a uh, relatively predictable cycle. And when that predictability is taken away from us, as it has been for the last almost 12 months, it becomes this um, incredibly stress-inducing experience, as, as we know, for our teachers, for our students as well. And so we've taken away the predictability and the rhythm that teachers have. And again, students as well. And so they're constantly being, able, being asked to pivot. And sometimes this happens week to week. And a lot of it is, is out of their control. In fact, most of it's out of their control, whether there is a um, large student party that happened off campus and now half of the sophomore class needs to quarantine. Or, um, you know, unfortunately they were exposed and so now they are working from home in quarantining for two weeks. So there's just been constant pivots and, um, these are contributing seriously to teacher stress and teacher burnout. And not only that is they're also feeling this drain on empathy and this drain on their overall care that they often have for their students, which is contributing even more to where they are mentally right now, because they want to be able to support their students. They want to be able to empathize with them and they're reaching that capacity if they haven't already. And so that's one of the things that what Peter was talking about is creating systems, creating structures that, that we're wanting to talk about today because we want to be able to have those teachers be able to pivot in a way that is not completely draining for them. That is that they know that they have resources there, that they have the ability to 
quote unquote, punt certain things, if you will, to their administrators or to the uh, other parties that can be responsible. And it's not all on their shoulders. Can I just jump in and, and say that this is a, a classic case of the way in which teacher autonomy becomes teacher isolation. And this is where we can help. So just moving forward, thanks. I think that's so important. And, you know, there's no accident that part of, so this is February, right? Which is the month where we don't have a lot of sunlight and it's, you know, we, even if you're in Houston right now, you might be really cold. And so this is a time when tight, you know, things are tough. And this year we're adding in, you know, we are super isolated and thinking about ways to, to break through that isolation. So Beta, one of the things that you talked about were systems. Can you elaborate a little bit on how your work involves systems that support students and teachers? Sure, absolutely. Um, one of the systems uh, that I can um, give you some detail in is the system that actually takes place weekly for us at One Schoolhouse. And this is what we consider our weekly watch list. So what, what happens is that any student who's on a teacher's radar, maybe the student missed uh, half of the assignments from last week, maybe the student hasn't been responding to emails, perhaps the student um, uh, has had a recent tragedy um, in, their, in their family and the teachers heard about it and they want to make sure that that student is being checked in on. So we have, um, the, the first place the teacher goes is they reach out to the student. The backbone of our system and all our support structures, support structures, excuse me, is the student teacher relationship. So immediately when a teacher senses something's wrong, they're going to send an email to the student and to check in on them. Then what they'll do is they will report that to me and we have a system where on Mondays and Tuesdays that student that teachers report to me and they enter everything in one place. We use uh, the database Salesforce and they submit an entry. And what I do is then I go through all of the entries. And so there's always a person on the other side of things. This is not just an automated response that goes out to our students, but um, I go through and if there is a message that perhaps needs to be a little bit more urgent, the student has been ignoring work for three weeks, I can uh, write it in such a way where maybe there's some more urgency. And if it needs to be softened a little bit because there's an extenuating circumstance, um, I can also do that. But it always goes through a person so that the teacher can truly concentrate on making sure that he or she knows their entire class and their energies are not solely focused on the students that, that do need a lot of support. From here, these uh, messages go to both the student and their school so that there are more people included in this loop uh, so that they know exactly that this is something that needs to be acted upon. All of our students, all of our classes follow the same rhythm so that everyone is on the same page. So for instance, our, our systems are aligned where every single um, course opens on a Friday or um, Friday evening or Saturday morning. And so that all of our students and all of our schools are expected to know when these due dates happen and when the watch list will come out. So the fact that they're all synchronized in this way, they still are taught asynchronously and students log in asynchronously, asynchronously but everything is on um, the same pattern. And that also contributes to, to our system too. Yeah. So. So I think what will really resonate with some folks is that we've for a long time not had the capacity to tap a student on the shoulder as he or she is leaving the room and say, hey, you know, I don't have that essay yet. And you said you were going to have it today. And oh, you know, scrabble through the backpack, here it is, or avoid it, take the, you know, students slinking through the door. But in either case, some of those proximal systems, as Liz Cates likes to call them, aren't there. And so therefore we've got supports in place that replace some of those proximal systems. But what I really like about what you said, Beta, is that 
Okay, we've got the submission, we've got the automation, here's the place to put the information. And I think you have some catch safes in place as well to make sure that teachers do contribute so there's not, um, so that no information doesn't mean that we aren't logging it, it means there really is nothing to be concerned about. And so you though, are the human being who looks at that and says, I understand something that's not in this system and so therefore, I'm gonna word that reach out. And we have the school on the other side that says we've got systems in place to support this child too. So it's not high tech, no, no human, right? It's a system so that the humans in place have a better chance of doing the parts of their job that they really need to do. Yeah, that's, that's a really nicely put summary, Sarah. We certainly want the relationship and the human component to be the forefront of what we do here at One Schoolhouse. And it, it truly is. We have, so I, I've over seven years, I've had some amazing relationships with my students. But I've all, as speaking from a teacher side of things, I've always known that the administration at one schoolhouse has had my back, has been supportive of me. So we have 1,300 students at one schoolhouse. I come from small independent schools where I knew every single name, every parent's name. Would I love to know every single one of our 1,300 kids and speak to them in a Zoom meeting? 100%. But that's not my my job. My job is making sure that our teachers feel supported because I can take the 10% of the heaviest workload off of their plates and they can make sure that they are concentrating um, in an equitable fashion across all of their students. So when I think about what that means, because we hold that teacher teacher student relationship at such import, the fact that the teacher's energy and building the asynchronous relationship through interaction mediated by technology because it has to be, we're an online school. So that effort and energy is focused on all of the students rather than being disproportionately spent on a student who may be struggling. Correct. Yeah. yeah we, we all know that that sort of axiom in schools that you know 10 percent of the kids may take 90 percent of your time um, and if that if some large percentage of that 90 percent is being shared that that reduces the amount of time that the teacher is spending and gives the teacher the opportunity as you just said to focus on on all of the kids and all of their needs without having to be losing sleep about one student or a couple of students and I'll just remind everybody that you can put questions in the Q&A and then um, also we encourage sharing resources in the chat. So Beta, one of the things that you told me when we were planning this webinar too is um, giving teachers permission to ditch some things rather than reinventing them over and over. And I was wondering, um, how, does that work, how does that play out? Well, um, you know, so I, I would say also uh, ditching things in a face-to-face -face school is a little bit different than, than permission to ditch things at one schoolhouse. Our, our courses are um, refreshed over the summertime and they are designed to follow a weekly cadence that really is uh, in terms of student workload, it's consistent from week to week. Um, but when it comes to having teachers ditch it, it goes back to that question of, of pivoting, right? Is saying, oh, a teacher had planned this, and I'm a science teacher um, prior to my prior to my career in, in administration. So, and I've worked at this uh, um, amazing osmosis lab, let's say, and I've set up the lab to make sure that there's social distancing, to make sure that the students have all the materials, everything is sanitized, all of that. And then, you know, 12 hours before the lab is supposed to go off, I have to turn it all online. And that is the state of, of where we are. And so rather than saying, I need to spend the next 12 hours, little sleep on creating the equivalent of this amazing experience online, 
where can your teachers be supported in using utilizing resources? Maybe those are textbook resources. Maybe there, you know there are some amazing resources out there that give a student experience of this lab, and you're not trying to recreate it from scratch. You're using what exists, and if there maybe maybe it doesn't mean it's a hands-on experience. Maybe this has to be more of um, an independent or even a, just a collaborative activity and and that's okay they're still going to understand osmosis and they're still going to move forward in their um their learning process and their ability to you know um ask questions and inquire and analyze material but it shouldn't be this huge lift for the teachers when it comes to pivoting because that is one of the things that is incredibly draining to them yeah, you know, earlier when we were talking with Lori Palco and some of her her conversations around framing things, she talked about we're not lowering a bar, we're shifting a bar. And I think that comes to mind here. And I've got a really specific example in the first question that I've got for you, which comes in, which is that we're finding requests for one-on-one -on -one appointments with teachers has increased tremendously. How can leaders help teachers navigate this demand on their time? That is, um, <laughs> that's, that's a big demand on, on teacher's time. And, and I understand why it happens, right? Students might be on Zoom and they aren't perhaps in the most um, productive workspace. Maybe they have Netflix on in the background and they're not paying attention to the class that's going on. And then they ask for the one-on-one -on -one time to kind of have a, a separate session, if you will. Um, one of the things that I think is really beneficial is having teachers be really clear about when their office hours are and when students can come to them for help and so that they're not adding things onto their day. And if it becomes a situation where students are asking for one-on-one -on -one meetings multiple times a week, or you know, their, their habit, habits haven't changed based on how much support the teacher is given, there needs to be um, a essentially a, a line that once it's crossed, that the teacher gets to send this on to the administration, where they are not the one who is solely responsible for this anymore. If there ends up being a pattern, chances are, as we know, if there's a pattern in one class, there's often pattern in other classes too, and that's where, similar to my role, that is where a lot of that um, knowledge lay, lies in the administration. So a teacher shouldn't be solely responsible. What Peter said about that teacher isolation component a teacher shouldn't be solely responsible for that once it gets to a cutoff point if you will and that you know can be established by institution it should go to the administration so that that teachers the 95 percent of their time isn't being taken by those individual situations i think too this is a place where schools can really have teachers backs by if saying that you know teachers will have will set their own office hours, make themselves available, if, you know, if it's all remote using Calendly or one of those things. But the school expects that the teacher's office hours will live within a particular box of time. Um, and that the school also understands that individual teachers may have particular reasons. And the school really needs to be proactive with families out front preemptively about how they're supporting their teachers in creating those times and protecting those times as well. And I think that that option of um, or that notion of shifting the bar. So if we are finding that our students need more, <clears throat> excuse me, one on one time with teachers because they're struggling with remote learning, well, then we look to teachers and we say, perhaps we'll help also release some of the expectations on the 45 minute Zoom class. And we'll say, you can release this video and schedule the rest of that time for small group interactions with students. And you can put them in small groups and the teacher can visit the, you know, the small groups. But I think helping release that notion of, I have to be doing 
my very best version of what I was doing in person now that we're remote. And now that we're back in person again, I've got to bring everything back that I had left behind. And well, it's, we may be back in person, but we may not be the same that we were. And so I think acknowledging that and Peter, can I actually want to ask you to expand upon that a little bit, that that need for academic leaders to really understand and know their teachers, because I don't think that happens in a large faculty Zoom meeting either. So what are some strategies that you think academic leaders can use to really understand teachers? Well, I'm sure teachers in some schools have been surveyed to death. That might not be the best way to do it, but I think it's just a matter of reaching out within the within the core community, whether it's at the grade level team or the department or the division level and checking in on people and seeing how they are doing. I think one of the things that none of us fully appreciated and we all sure appreciate it now is how these one-on-one -on -one interactions, especially again, when they're taking place through a, a medium like Zoom, um, the concentration required in those interactions is, is huge and so doing zoom teaching is really tiring in a way that i'm not sure we fully investigated all the all the dimensions of we'll we'll probably have learned a whole lot about it when the people get done thinking about it in a couple of years but right now i would say just check in on people individually and um and there's a um i, I saw the other day and i I will have to find, and I can't now find the resource um, about you know things to say versus things not to say. How to really find language that supports teachers rather than language that um, it's kind of. We all know this is hard for everybody. Um, I mean, yes, it's true, but there's a follow up on that that is that is more positive. And how are you doing in this? I care about how you're doing right now, and make it clear that you know the individual and that you want to know more about the individual and their situation. One of the things about schools is it's always been true that we don't know the lives of students because we don't see them at home. We don't you know, know what they're living with, what their daily life is like. Well, that's also true of teachers. And in this situation, that's suddenly become a much more important factor. I'm not sure it's light years more important it's always been important but it's more important now that we really understand what each individual is dealing with if nothing else this pandemic has really given us the opportunity and demanded that we focus on one another as human beings and our needs and and anxieties and hopes and dreams that's what schools are all about and we need to honor that every minute of every day. I want to put a link in the chat. It's a re recent Harvard Business Review article, but I think it's um, not behind the paywall. And it's about how we're losing touch with our networks during this pandemic. And it, they've got percentages and numbers of lost connections and that kind of thing. But I think that's something that speaks to the, the data side of the more important human side that Beta and Peter have just mentioned, which is that we can document the lack of human contact and support and interactions that we're having with one another. And the fact that we can document it means that it's really incumbent upon us to do something about it. And Peter, I think your one-on-one -on -one touch, touch base conversations, so important, even though everyone says, oh gosh, another Zoom call. Well, it, when it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it feels a little different than the large group. You can use the telephone too, so you don't have to. So that that visual concentration and, and physical effort that goes into that isn't uh, isn't part of it. Seriously. Great point, Beta. What do you want to add about the importance of those one-on-one -on -one conversations? Uh, I th I think um, Sarah and Peter, you you certainly um, emphasized a lot of important things. I. I just think that the more that 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 foundation of a teacher relationship can be there with their administrators, the more that they're going to feel the support. I mean, here we have um, a number of teachers and they teach most of them teach just one class with us. 
but we have had a, a number this year and you know it's it's horrible but we've had a number who've lost a, a close family member to COVID and the rallying um, that I've seen uh, surrounding them from our re remote uh, school, if you will, has been you know, second to none. And they have felt like they have a place where they can ask for support and that they can lean on us to make sure that as they are dealing with, um, you know, oftentimes unfortunate tragedies in their personal life that they don't have to be worried about um, the administrative tasks happening at, at school. We, we can handle that for them. So just, just the fact that um, if you can bolster that, I would say, is going to be so vital to, to helping all of our stakeholders and all of our teachers and all of our students, of course, feel like they are um, supported. Great suggestion posted in the chat that if you are on campus, you can take a walk outside, masked and distanced and, and really connect that way too. So we are out of time. Beta, thank you so much. We wanna have you back for sure. Thank you so much for having me. All right, thank you, Peter. Take care, everybody. Bye.